Well, hello, Internet. Welcome to the final video on editing every single thing in Cascading Style Sheets. Today, I'm going to cover layout and positioning. If you haven't read or viewed my XHTML W3C tutorial or my Adding CSS Style and CSS Boxes tutorial, you should definitely do that before watching this. It is very important to enclose all of your code into a series of block elements in your HTML. Everything on your page should be enclosed by a header or a paragraph tag, as you can see here. If you do that, not only will you be XHTML compliant, you'll also have no problem with positioning your content later on. If you forgot, here are a listing of all the block elements that are available in XHTML. Now let's move on to the div tag. When you have all of your content separated into block elements, it's time to start sectioning off your content using the div tag. For example, I separated the boys' content from the girls' content on this page, and also I gave each div tag an ID so I could style them as I like. You could give them an appropriate background color by editing the CSS page, as I did right here, where I gave the background color for the boys' div tag blue and the girls' pink, and this is hexadecimal code for pink. Divs operate just like the box principles that I talked about in the previous CSS tutorial. So if you've watched that, you'll be able to understand divs very well. Now I'll give you some sample code to play with so you really get divs. Right here, we have HTML code. If you saw the HTML tutorial, you understand what all this is. This is defining that I'm using a strict version of XHTML. Here's my opening tags and so forth. And in my body, if where I want my div to be displayed, I just create a div followed by ID equals whatever I want my div to be called, in this case, brain. And then within that div, I want to display this header. I want to display this image right here. And that I have contained within a paragraph tag, as you can see. And then I have a final paragraph tag right here. Well, if you enter that in your browser, you would get something that looks like this. What a brain. And then here is my image and all of the information that I followed up with that. So this is a basic div. Let's make this div more stylish by editing some CSS code. Here, I'm using the exact same layout. However, I'm editing the way the div looks. What did I do? I added a border width of two pixels. I added this border style of dotted added a custom border color, added a background color, made the overall width 200 pixels. That's why, see, here I am demonstrating this stretches out as far as it can. In this case, I define my width as 200, that's why you have a box here. And then I chose to align everything as center. And whenever you type this in to your HTML in exactly the same way, you can see how it would affect that div. You can edit the div's elements, margins, and padding to move it around on the screen, just like we did in the box element tutorial. And the best way to learn is to start messing around with HTML and the CSS and a simple text editor to get all this stuff. Okay, another great thing about the elements is that you can edit the tags inside of it with ease. Let's say you want to change the color of the H3 header tag inside of the brain2 div. Just type the following into your style sheet and automatically that header is going to change to the color of purple. Now let's move on to spans. It's great that we can use div elements to contain and edit block elements, but what about inline elements, you may ask? You can edit inline elements with a great tag called span. Let's say you would like to make text blink in fuchsia just to irritate some people. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Here I'm defining a principle or a class named irritate. Now everything that I label me being the span right here with the irritate class is going to show up in fuchsia and blink and just that simple you can see the code right here and that code is right here so there's a nice way to irritate people if you'd like it's time now to make some div elements move well you're almost a css guru i just have to teach you how to move your content around the screen then you'll be able to create multi-column layouts or even irritating pop-ups, and I'll show you how to do that. To get the brain div just created to place itself in the right corner of the browser requires just one line of text, float right. 
Here is an example if you would use float right in a property within your brain tag that we showed you before. I'll click on this and you can see right here, here is the web page and what I did, what was previously over here is now found in the right corner. That's just how simple it is to make a sidebar column. It's exactly the same except I put float right property in this uh, content area. So that's how easy it is to create right sidebar. The only thing you must remember is that the div you are floating must appear before the div you want to be to the right of. As you may notice, the brain to div is not floating to the right of the title. And let me show you here again. See, the title is up here and the brain sidebar property that I created or sidebar div that I created is next to the main content area but not next to the title. Order matters within CSS. So you wanna make sure down in your HTML code that you put your div that you're defining that you wanna to be to the right of the content area, which we have here, which is another div. So that's basically all you have to remember in, in regards to the HTML. I know the first example wasn't pretty. It didn't have a header, a footer, the main content sidebar area were sort of flowing together. So here's an example that's a little bit nicer. Here you can see I defined a title bar, I defined a footer, and here's the main content area, which is divided by padding from the right sidebar. So how did we do that? Simple. What I did was I defined this body background color to be different than anything else here, being white. Then I defined my header section with a color, text color and padding. Defined the footer. This is all, all that goes into creating layouts like this. I mean, it's, it's just so simple. Then Lipsum, which is the name of my main content area. This, by the way, is the reason the main content is separated from the sidebar. The reason why there's, those aren't buttoned up against each other is because I put 240 pixels. Then we have brain. Where did I get the 240 pixels from, you might add? This width of the brain sidebar. And then I added 40 pixels, and that's the reason why we have a gutter on there. Then you see right here, float right. This is how I was able to put this on the right side of the screen, but I could also put it on the left side. And then without this, your sidebar would be touching the header. That's why I defined the margin top at 20 pixels. And then what I did was I went in here, I put my header first because I want that to show up. Then I put in my brain two div, which is my right sidebar. And here's where I close it off. Here's my main content area and here's my footer. So I did everything nice and in order. You may not realize it, but you have learned a ton about Cascading Style Sheets. If you wanted to turn this into a three column display with two sidebars on the left, just create a new div filled with content of your choice. Give this div a custom class name and create CSS styling for it. Adjust the property margin right in your main content area, like I did before with the gutter, as you can see right here. You want to adjust for that. And then you're also, since we're making a three column layout, you're going to want to adjust the padding area on the main content area on the left as well. And then boom, you got yourself a three column layout. Here is an example. If we would actually put two columns in for a three column layout with using XHTML and cascading style sheets. All that I did here was used a float right tag just like I did before and then I adjusted the property margin right and margin left in my main content area to make everything line up and here is an example of a three column layout where I have both a left sidebar and a right sidebar and if you go to this page you'll be able to uh, click on view page source and see exactly how I did it but it's real simple I just floated this one left floated this one right and whenever I was doing my H or XHTML layouts, I made sure that both of these divs appeared before this center content div.